Okay, with all the talk recently on the uh, bandsaw group about uh, 1 16th inch bandsaw blades and uh, a couple people had a question on the silver brazing of a bandsaw blade versus uh, the regular uh, electric butt welding. I thought I'd show uh, at least what I do with uh, a little jig I've made and how I uh, go about using a little uh, oxyacetylene torch to uh, silver braze a bandsaw blade together. Now what I have here in my vise is uh, a little fixed drive I've come up with. It's got uh, right here is two little raised portions and what they do is they, they guide the blade and keep it aligned so that there's no misalignment in the blade. There's two little uh, clamps I have here that I use to clamp the blade down on the fixture. I've got a little space in between here where I it allows the uh, flame of the uh, acetylene torch to go without uh, hindering the blade and it also um, makes it so that the fixture itself doesn't draw too much heat away from the blade so that the actual silver brazing goes quickly. And what I've done, and uh, I've got the one side of the blade uh, clamped in the fixture and oriented correctly, is uh, I've used a, uh, a scarf joint on each side of the blade to uh, allow more surface area for the silver brazing to take effect so I don't have a, uh, just a butt weld which may not be strong enough when you're using a silver brazing. And, um, in case you don't know what a scarf joint is, what I've done, I, I have this little uh, picture here, and what I've done is I've, I've taken my uh, blade over to my bench grinder and ground, uh, I would say it's about a 30 degree angle from, uh, from horizontal on each blade. And I did it carefully so that the angles match up. And what I do is I put that uh, scarf joint in the fixture, line it up very carefully, and I also uh, cleaned very carefully the areas to be brazed. So in a couple minutes here, I'll show you what the uh, what kind of torch I use and whatnot to actually affect the braze and, and put the blade together. Now, what I use to actually accomplish the brazing is this uh, little jeweler's torch, and I have a fairly big tip in this one at this point because uh, I want to get the heat in fast and I don't want to spend a lot of time cooking the blade so that the, the quicker um, I can affect proper flow of the braze the better off I'm going to be and this is a, a little torch brand and uh, it, it works good I use it uh, I use it at work for different types of uh, precision brazing operations I need any, any type of very small uh, any type of very small jobs I have to do that uh, I can't have the uh, big heat and big flame of a, a regular acetylene torch. Um, you can you can actually silver braze with uh, a regular uh, burns o matic type propane torch. However, I think the time and the size of the flame makes it suitable only for a bigger, thicker blade. And since this blade is so small, one sixteenth of an inch. Uh, I'm going to use this because I, I know this works. I've done it before, and it's it's really the way to go. And uh, I, I use a big. Uh, I have a full size uh, oxyacetylene card over here, but uh, you can use a small B type tanks or, or any type of smaller tanks with this torch. It works just fine. So what I'm going to do in a couple minutes is uh, talk about the uh, the type of braze I use and the flux to do this. Okay, now the uh, the flux I use with my silver brazing wire is this uh, Superior number 601, and it's just what I uh, use. There's uh, there's other brands of flux that you can use um, very successfully, but uh, I build uh, bicycle frames from time to time, and uh, I use this along with the uh, same silver brazing wire I'm going to use, and it works just great. And there's I have no reason to change. And what this stuff is, it's a uh, it's a thick uh, thick paste, like it looks, it's like soft clay almost. And what you do is you you mix it with a little bit of water. I just have a little bit in there. Now that's that's the consistency of like uh, Elmer's wood glue. Um, it's 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 uh, just on the verge of being thick, and you just want it to stick to the uh, 
the joint, what you do when you go to do it. And what you do is you just you just brush this on the joint and uh, you apply your heat. Now, when the uh, one thing with brazing is this flux, when it comes up to heat, it goes like clear, it looks like water. If you go much more than that, it burns, it turns black, and you will have a very unsuccessful joint if it goes black. So at that point, you have to stop, clean it all off, clean it all, uh, your metal and everything else, and start again. So you want to be careful you don't get too much heat into it. What I use um, for the braze here, now there's, um, I use this 062 uh, silver brazing alloy, it's 56% silver, it's uh, not cheap, let's just say that, but I, like I said, I use it for my cycle frames and it works well, it's very strong. You can buy kits that have a little piece of foil, it's silver brazing foil, and what you do is you stick it in your joint before you go to braze and it's just enough material to affect the, the braze. Now I, I braze, I do a lot of brazing and welding and whatnot and, and I don't have any problem using this. It's uh, actually easier if you use that silver foil because it's, it's very thin, it melts almost instantly. Um, the thing with that though is uh, because it melts instantly a lot of times what happens is, especially to a novice brazer, you melt the, you see the material melt and you think you're done well, it hasn't really flowed onto the, uh, the metal because it, it melts way before the metal's up to heat. So you have to make sure that your, that your metal's up to temperature too, even after the, uh, that silver foil melts. So there's a, little, there's a little technique and little experience in this. And the best thing you can do is, is get, some, uh, get some metal and try it a couple times so you get familiar with brazing. It's not hard to do. It's, it's uh, not so much different from soldering. Um, there's a little, maybe a little more technique. It's not uh, exactly rocket scientist, especially in this application. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to fire up my torch, and I'm going to see if you can see me do the braze, and, and I'll show you what it's like when it's done. It's going to be hard to see, but we'll see how that turns out. Now, one other thing I want to mention is uh, with brazing here, especially using an uh, settling type torch. You really want to use some uh, proper brazing goggles. Now these are not sunglasses. They're uh, they're properly shaded lenses that's suitable for uh, brazing with an oxyacetylene torch because you absolutely can damage your eyes staring at the intense flame. So uh, you know you don't want to just go off and uh, just braze these without eye protection. It's it's silly to do so. Um, to that end too, you got to do it in a very well lit area because. Uh, you know, when you put these things on, it becomes hard to see all of a sudden. But uh, it's better to be hard to see than uh, not to be able to see at all. Okay, I want to talk about lighting the torch for a minute. Um, we, and I don't know how this is going to come across in, in the uh, video. But what you want to do when you use a selling torch, you want to have what's known as a neutral flame. Now, if you have too much acetylene in it, you get what they call an acetylene feather and that makes for a, a bad results when um, when brazing. Also, if you get too much oxygen in it, what you have, and I don't know if you can hear it, there's a hissing noise and that flame becomes very intense and what happens there, you have pretty much a nice little cutting torch here with too much oxygen so when you go to put your uh, flame to your, your uh, piece it's going to heat up real quick and just probably vaporize the metal especially on this thin thing so what you what you want to do is you want to get it so that the acetylene feather just disappears and a little hair more there should be no noise coming out of your torch and I don't know how this is coming across but that's basically a neutral flame and anything anything different that's going to make your uh, your brazing come out bad so having had this all started up, that flame's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, give this a shot and see what happens here. What I do sometimes is preheat the, preheat the brazing material a little bit and get it, re get it ready because this, this actually goes fast. Okay, that, that's done. That, that went that quick. I know I got good flow, and uh, it's as quick as that. And that's a strong joint. Now, 
doing this on camera, I've got a little bit too much material on the joint itself, but what I'm going to do afterwards is uh, just clean that up a little bit with a file till it's, it's uh, the same thickness as the blade itself. And I'm going to clean that up and come back and I'm going to install this on the saw and make a cut with it and you can see how it works. I just want to talk, talk about filing a little bit here. And actually a lot of that uh, excess material that looked like it was on that joint was basically the flux. And when you, when you, when you get rid of that flux, um, the joint itself was nice and clean. Now I use, I'm using a small jeweler's file. And um, hold on, I've got to say something to the cameraman here. Okay, when you use a file, don't give it this kind of nonsense, because what happens is every time you pull that file across in the backstroke, you're dulling that file. The way to use a file is a forward stroke, and then lift up and come back. And what that does, because it only cuts on the forward stroke, now I'm sure some of you know this already, and you know, I'm just uh, telling you stuff you already know, but... Um, the quickest way to doll a file rapidly is sit there and, and work it like a sewing machine. It's not meant to do that. It's meant to cut on the, on the push stroke and lift up and come back. And that will remove the material the quickest. Now that actually looks, uh, looks very good right now. So what I'm going to do is uh, flip it over, do the other side, and then I'll, uh, I'll hook it up on the saw and we'll try it out. Okay, I've got the, uh, the blade I just braced installed in my 14-inch uh, delta saw. Without, I took the riser kit off for this blade because I, I use the uh, smaller blades for some of this work. And it's all tension. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get these little skinny blades to track correctly, but it's, uh, for the most part, it's set up well. Um, I use these cool blocks in my blade guide so I can actually put the, uh, put the blocks right up against the blade works well for these uh, these little thin blades like this 16th blade and what I got here is it, it's a scrap off of some product I've been making uh, recently and it, what, what I've got three laminations of uh, three-quarter cherry so I'm gonna make the cut in there I haven't tried this blade yet so you'll see it you'll see it cut uh, in real time so I'm gonna fire this thing up Thick piece of cherry. It's, it's not uh, certainly not balsam wood. The thing I like about these 16 blades is you can just pivot them on themselves like that. It makes it turns this thing into a scroll saw. That's why I'm I'm so sorry that nobody's making these things because uh, that's so nice to be able to do that. And the key to using these blades successfully is patience. Let the blade cut. And, and there you go. That was a that was a damaged blade that uh, that I silver braced together, and it, it cuts fine. And I'll be able to use this on uh, on more projects. Now this this blade this is an old blade I have, and it's uh, it's definitely done some cutting. So it's it's not the sharpest uh, blade. But in any case, uh, if I was going to really cut this thick stuff, I'd put a, th a newer blade on. But for for thinner stuff, I mean three quarter, it goes through this stuff like there's no tomorrow and it, it, there's such a joy to use. So I hope you enjoyed this little video and I hope it answers some questions on, uh, on brazing your bandsaw blades.